All right, let's go to Rhea in Alberta, Canada. What's up, Rhea? Good morning. Thank you for having me on, Dr. John. Of course. How are you? You sound so lovely. I'm well, thank you. So um, my issue is weight. Um, I got to give you a little background. I have been uh, a Dave Ramsey uh, follower since 2007. I saw him at an event in 2007 in Salt Lake City, and I kind of have been on the program ever since. One time I had a fall off, but I got back on. So, uh, hey, way to go, sir. You, have you paid up? You don't owe anybody any money? None. Wow, way off. to go. Yeah, house paid off, got investments. You don't have so, a house um, payment? No house payment, no house wow. payment, no no um, credit card, nothing. Hey, do so, people listen to the show? There's 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 a big chunk of our listeners that don't know don't don't know what like the Dave Ramsey program. And all. Tell them what it feels like to not have a house payment. In it, you got inflation, you got Christmas coming up. I know. Like, so, um, tell them what that feels like. I sleep at I sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, because you know, like, <laughs> oh, it's gas is more expensive. It's annoying. It's not a choice between gas or or food, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It is, and and you know what? Sometimes, I mean, this Christmas is going to be a little tight. Yeah. But it, you know, um, so I'm 75. I've got five kids, 14 grandkids. But um, they all know that grandma is not going to be a cash cow this this year, oh. and I just kind of live with live within my means. That means you ha you've yeah. also over the years of paying all your debts off, you've also learned how to have hard conversation not hard conversations, but just direct conversations, right? Yeah, that's oh, exactly. That's so great! You're incredible, Ria. So how can I help yeah. you? you? You mentioned weight. How okay. can I help you? Yeah. So. You know, since I was about 12, went into puberty, I grew up on a farm. I was the oldest one in the family, so I helped with farm chores. I was always kind of a stockier build, like, you know, not real slim, trim, 100 pound. My my frame is not okay. small. And so I always grew up kind of with low self-esteem. I mean, I was 127 pounds for all of high school where all the other girls were 115. Like that, you know. Um, so I think did people, my mom did, was hold, overweight. Real, real my quick. grandmas were not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did, did Were people ugly to you? Or was this something in your mind? Were people mean to you? No. I think maybe it was in my mind. Okay. And I say in your yeah. mind, like, you're, you're not crazy or anything like that, but... No, no. Uh, 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 the difference between one fifteen and one twenty seven. I know. Is is not a great. It's not a significant gap, right? No. Um, but so, maybe to a fourteen year old, it is. Oh, no, make no mistake about that, right? So I'm 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 not trying to minimize it. What I'm trying to I'm trying to get at is, was this something you sensed in yourself, or were people yeah. making fun of you? Were they laughing at no. you? Was your mom always making comments? Was your mom always on a diet and your dad making comments about her and you 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 absorb some of that? That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. My mom was always on a diet. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I don't think my dad ever made a comment. I don't, don't think so. Okay. But your mom so. was always talking about weight and was always on a diet and yep. partition a pear tree. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're 75. So I, I, you've had a, 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 a remarkable life. You've got grandkids, your own kids. And here we yeah, are. Yeah, and you know, I'm really. I mean, I've I've had some hard stuff. Um, my oldest daughter passed away when she was 15 from cancer. Oh, it was wow. not diagnosed properly, and she passed away. Oh, my my husband died in a car accident. Um, you know, um, I did go for counseling after after you know a number of deaths in the family. I did go for counseling a couple of different times, but it was more grief counseling, and sure. it was. It, it was astounding how much good that did. Oh, good. That's cool. Um, I tried to go back with the same, well, it was two different counselors, actually, two different times. I tried to go back and talk with them about the weight, because mm -hmm. I still think I have that self-esteem issue. In fact, I know I do. Okay. Um, but bottom line, they are so busy hmm. that an issue of what I'd like to lose is about 30 pounds, maybe a little bit more. Okay. But it's just enough to make me fluffy instead of 
streamlined, and I want to be streamlined because that's I will feel better about Rhea. Okay. So. So. I had a gas gastroplasty, and okay. it partially helped. Yep. Okay. How much did you lose after that? Uh, about sixty pounds. Okay. And have you maintained it? No. Nope. Okay, so it came back. Did it come back plus, or did it come back about about level? Um, about level. Okay. Well, no, no, no. I, I was two forty. I'm one eighty, and I'd like to get down to about one fifty. Okay, so, so you, you, you're still down significantly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, and I'm going to try to do it in as dig like. I was gonna said I was gonna say bite sized and then I was gonna say digestible and I don't want to make food references they were just from what was coming out okay um, I'm gonna try to make this um, as simple as possible is that cool perfect thank right. you um, I could talk nerd all day we could call some ex like we could talk nerd all day let's get to the meat and potatoes here and again there's yet another food reference sorry about that so um, there's a an extraordinary man who is also a great actor. His name is Ethan Supley. And he has um, documented a just an astounding weight loss and not only weight loss, but a, just a personal transformation. And my friend, uh, Dr. Lane Norton, who's one of the most, the, one of the um, premier voices in the world on nutrition and weight loss and building muscle and taking care of your body. Um, he told me that Ethan one time said this, when the house is on fire, that's not the time to try to figure out why the house is burning. Like, where did the fire start? Why did it start? When the house is on fire, we just need to get out. Let's just get out of the house. And then when the fire has burned itself out, then we send in the the arson investigators, the engineers, the whoever, to go in and then to do, to figure it out so that it doesn't happen again, right? Yep. So similarly, you can, and you've done the work, you've thought through this a lot about where did this idea that Rhea is less than, where did that start? Yeah. And you've, you've pinpointed it as a 12-year-old little girl working on a farm that you were a little bit bigger than the other girls in your class. And that may just outside, feel outside of the bounds a little bit. My guess is it's deeper than that. And also my guess is at this point at 75, doesn't matter. Okay. Let's do the things that we know are going to help. And I, I'm going to tell you all that with one giant caveat. Okay. And this is a hard caveat. If you lost 30 pounds in the next 30 days, you know who would be there? Rhea. True. And if you lost 50 pounds, Rhea goes with you too. That's true. And so I want to promise you that you'll feel that, you'll see that number on the scale and you'll feel so proud and good for a minute. And then you'll look at Rhea and until you make peace and love her, regardless of what that scale says, you're going to be chasing ghosts. Okay. Okay. The Rhea I've got to talk to today is incredible. You've been through hell and back a bunch of times. You grew up in Canada, for God's sake. I grew up in <laughs> Texas, and they told us at church hell was hot. I don't believe that. I think it's cold, and Canada sounds mm -hmm. a lot, right? It's You've been through so much, and you can sit back and look at your family and you're going to have a house full of knuckleheaded little grandkids in a couple of couple of weeks. Yeah. You've been a part of changing your family tree and changing your family legacy. And as an outsider, I see a lot of reasons to love Rhea. She's an impressive woman. Okay? So the first thing I want you to do before we do anything else, we get off the phone over the next couple of days, is I want you to write a letter to that 12-year-old little Rhea. Mm. And I want you to tell Rhea what you think of her. And I'm going to ask you to be really kind to that 12-year-old little girl because you wouldn't talk to her the same way you talk to grown-up Rhea, would you? No. Nope. 
That little 127 pound 12 year old girl was beautiful and was a hard worker and was probably hilarious and probably had to deal with some of her mom's demons too, right? Yes. And that 12 year old little girl, you know what she deserves to look in the mirror and just smile from ear to ear and be absolutely in love with herself because she's beautiful and she's fun and she's silly and she's goofy and she doesn't need to absorb mom's weight issues and mom's personal struggles and mom's trauma that she endured as a young girl and, and all that. But here we are. So I want you to write 12 year old Rhea a letter. Tell her that you love yep. her. Tell her you're proud of her. Let her off the hook. Okay? Yes. All right. So that's step number one. Step number okay. two is we're going to focus on, we're going to practice in this upcoming new year on a new identity. You are not Rhea the overweight lady. You are going to be Rhea, the woman who's a good steward of her body. Okay? Ah, Let's pretend you got 25 years left. I'm a good steward of my body. I'm going to take care of it. That means I'm going to move. I'm going to exercise some. I'm going to, I want to be able to, when I'm 85, to kick my grandkids' little booty all over the living room floor when we wrestle. That's what we're aiming for, okay? So we are going to become a good steward of our body. That's our identity. Not we're fat and we have to get smaller so that we can finally love who we are. That's not going to work. We're going to become a steward of our body. And if we are a good steward of our body, our weight will take care of itself. Okay? So I want you to spend some time over the next couple weeks before the new year rolls over asking yourself, what's going to make me a good steward of my body? And let me tell you, uh, we're going to get through some of the details down here, but this is important. This last weekend, my church had a potluck. I love potlucks. (laughs) Y'all have those in Canada? Absolutely. Oh, man. And my favorite part of the church potluck is the card table full of desserts. And because I've been, I've got a great friend in Dr. Lane Norton who has been really direct with me and been a real blessing to me. You know what I did? I went in at lunch and I had my lunch and I annihilated that dessert table. I, I, at one point I sat down and my wife looked at me and her eyes got big and I said, I'm making poor choices and I know. And she said, okay, just wanted to make sure you were conscious. And, and at dinner, I had a small omelet because like a budget, I'd spent my money at lunch. I didn't save it for dinner. And you know what? The next day I was down 1.2 pounds. Okay. So I want to tell you that sometimes being a good steward of your body is just having a great day. Okay. It's not always torture and it's not restriction all the time. And it's not hatred as my my friend Sal over at Mind Pump said, you can't hate your body into making it looking better. That's not sustainable. It's like hating your husband into loving you more. That just doesn't work. Okay? Yeah. So, we're going to start with a new identity. We're going to be a good steward of our bodies for, for as long as we've got it left. Okay? Here's the second thing. Awareness and intentionality. There's a gap between stimulus and response, between all of a sudden I miss my husband or when your daughter's birthday rolls around and you miss her or yeah. one of your grandkids calls and says, granny, I got a C instead of an A and your default sitting might be to grab a cookie or to go to the store or to get a large Coke and pour the whole thing, right? All we're looking for. Absolutely f- is. That's an absolute default. Okay. Right so here's what we're doing. We're just going to look for the uh, some space. Just a gap between that initial feeling and I'm reaching for it. Last night, and I'm learning this. I'm practicing this right along with you, okay? I know I'm not obese. I'm not struggling, but I am trying to get control of my intentionality. Yesterday, I was on the phone having a conversation. On the way out the door, I grabbed off my boss's desk. He's got a bowl of candy. I grabbed a box of the milk duds, and I started walking out, and just before I opened them, I had that space and I set them down on his admin's desk. So I carried them for about 15 feet. And it was just a gap between stimulus and response between I'm having a hard conversation. Ah, I pick these up. I don't want these. I'm going to set these down. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Just a gap. 
a big part of that is tracking, okay? And so here's a cool thing. My friend, Dr. Lane Norton, has what I think has been a blessing to me. My friends are on, all using it now. Um, It's the single best tracking app for what we eat in the world. It's called Carbon, C-A-R-B-O-N. And he is going to gift you a lifetime membership. You can have it forever. Okay. So I want you to hang on the line. Oh, let's thank Dr. Norton. It's, it's been a blessing to me. And I called them last night and said, Hey, would you be willing to gift this? It's been such a blessing to me to, to this caller I've got tomorrow. And he said, absolutely. Um, and so you'll stay on the line. We'll get your contact info. And it's just an app that you log into and it tracks your protein and your calories. It just, it helps you be intentional about what you've eaten over the course of a day. And I That's thought awesome. I was eating about a thousand calories less than I actually was. And so there's been a few weeks, a few months where I've had to learn, like, I'm not starving. I'm not hungry. I'm just used to this space being filled up with gummy candies and milk duds, right? Yes, yes. And I just have to feel what that feels like. Ah, feels good. Or it feels not great, but I'll be all right. See what I'm saying? Yes. It's the single best uh, weight loss app. Not even weight loss app. It's a coaching app. And it's incredible, but I'm yeah. going to give it to you, okay? You put it on your smartphone, and you can just carry it around with you, and it's going to be something that you practice with, okay? And right. um, you're going to have to come up with, here's number three, some sort of restriction that you can live with. Some do vegan. Some do keto. Some do what it, I don't care what it is. But at some point, you're going to have to say, I'm, I'm through. I spent my money for today. And money is just calories, right? I've spent them for the day. Yep. And so um, I had a humongous breakfast full of pancakes and bacon. And- cool. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a really light, light dinner. I'm going to go for a walk, okay. right? Because I spent my money today. It's okay. just like a budget, except it's calories, okay? Um, exactly. And then th- the final one is a part of our stewardship of our body is we're going to, we're going to move. Whether that's exercise, whether that's going to the local YMCA, whether that's getting in, in one of those swim, those like water aerobics group, whatever that is, I'm just going to commit to movement. It might be walking around my yard. Okay. Yeah. And, I love to, I love to walk when there's no ice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't go kid, walking in the ice. My kids gave me a bike. No, my kids gave me a recumbent bike two oh, years ago for Christmas. Great. So I've got no excuse. There you go. Hey, watch your favorite show. There we go. Put it on there. Which it was which Dr. Deloney, right? John Deloney. I mean, so. I, I, <laughs> that's going to make you pedal really slow. It's kind of a, a <laughs> it put you to sleep. All right. Here's the last, last thing. I'm going to let you go, okay? Okay. The last thing is I want you to write 75-year-old Rio letter. And I want you to tell 75-year-old Rio how proud of her you are, how much you love her. I want you to be... Okay. Hug that woman for the hard stuff she's been through. Hug that woman for the great stuff she's, for the hard choices she's had to make over the years, for the, her ability to pay off all her debts and have hard conversations with her kids. I want you to to write 75 year old real letter and remind her that she's not a failure. Her whole life hasn't been a sham. She hasn't screwed up everything. She's a really cool lady. Thank you. Is that cool? Yes, it is. All right. I am, I cannot be more grateful for you. Thank you for calling, for sharing your journey with us. Thank you for being brave. Thank you for letting that 12-year-old little girl go play for the first time in a long time. And thank you for loving my friend, 75-year-old Rhea. And big shout out to Dr. Lane Norton and his team, like the incredible Carbon app. Go check it out wherever you get apps. It's worth it if you're thinking about losing weight in this upcoming year or you want to start um, lifting weights more, whatever you're, goals are check it out carbon um, and i by the way i have no financial affiliation in this thing at all none zero i make zero dollars off of this thing i just use it personally and i believe in it um in, in a deep and profound way um ria you're awesome 